It's a sea of red at the University of Dayton Arenas tonight. The Flyers and the Creighton Blue Jays will hook up again in a terrific non-conference matchup. With Mark Adams, I'm Tom Hamilton. Glad you could join us. A year ago, one of college basketball's best games in double overtime, Creighton outlasting Dayton in Omaha. And Nate Funk went off for 38 points, went to the free throw line 18. Times. Brian Gregory and the Dayton Flyers want to keep Nate Thuck off the line, and Brian Roberts went off as well. Let's check out tonight's Star Watch, Mark. Well, Nate Funk averaging 13 points a game, but he dropped 28 on Nebraska, and Creighton's only lost 47% from three. And Brian Roberts, one of the fine off guards that you have not heard a lot about. 20 points per game. This guy can flat out score. And a look at tonight's starting lineups. Each team with four starters back from a year ago. Anthony Tolliver, an outstanding big man for the Creighton Blue Jays. And he is going to be matched up against a young freshman out of Ohio, Kurt Hillsman. That will be a key encounter. Tonight's officials, Larry Rose, Fran Connolly, and Frankie Bordeaux, and we are ready to go in what is truly one of the finest home court advantages in all of college basketball, the UD Arena. This building opened in 1969, and almost each and every year, you see NCAA tournament activity in this building. Tonight, it's Creighton and Dayton, and Dayton owns the opening tip. Little on the wing, there's Roberts. He will be a marked man. He had 34 points against Creighton last year. Well, interesting that Nick Porter draws the matchup with Brian Roberts. He's the strongest and quickest defender on this Creighton Blue Jay basketball team. Little along the baseline, and it belongs to Creighton. No score, just underway from Dayton, Ohio, and glad you could join us. Dayton really wants to push the tempo tonight. Creighton really wants to pound the ball inside. Now look for Anthony Tolliver to get a touch early down the block against Kurt Hillsman, senior against freshman. Dana Alton wants to expose the mismatch. Creighton hasn't played in a week. This is Watts with a shot clock at 12. And there's Tolliver Lowe, one-on-one -on -one against Hillsman. Inside, he tries to muscle it up. Roberts lost it, saved it. And it's Creighton basketball. The winningest coach in Creighton basketball history, Dana Altman, in his 13th year, eight consecutive 20-win seasons. And it seems like each year after the college basketball season, some schools coming after Dana Altman, who's been very content in Omaha, Nebraska. Including Dayton three years ago when they hired Brian Gregory. Right. The first call Ted Kissel made was to Dana to see if he had any interest. He wanted to stay in Omaha. Watts with the miss. Second chance opportunity as Tolliver pulled it down. No score as we have played nearly a minute and a half from Dayton, Ohio. This is Funk who had 38 points last year against Dayton. And a kicking of the ball violation, and so it main stays in possession of Creighton. Tom, we can clearly see that Dana Altman wants to get the ball to Anthony Tolliver on the block. First possession, he gets a touch. Second possession, they're trying to get it down to him again. This is Funk on the baseline. This is Tolliver. You don't see him do that often, and that's why. Scott on the wing. Still no score. This is Scott. And the rebound, Tolliver. Boy, both teams just so stingy defensively. They hold their opponents in the low 30% from three and the high 30% from two-point range. These two teams can really get down and play defense. Two minutes in, both pitching a shutout. Tolliver leaves it for Funk. And Funk, it rattles in and out. Rebound cleared out of there by Little. And here comes Dayton. Still no scores. We have played two minutes and 20 seconds. Well, you get the feel that both these teams recognize the importance of this game. Creighton has brought themselves on the national scene with consistency of winning. And Dayton has averaged 19 wins over the last nine seasons. They want to crack that top 20 code as well. Roberts with 10 on the shot clock. He'll take a three, knocks it down. 
And Anthony Tolliver matched up one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter with Brian Roberts. He had to lay off of him to take away dribble penetration. Roberts just rose up and stroked the three. Neither team shooting well here. The only bucket belongs to Brian Roberts. Here's Tolliver again getting a touch. They feel it's a mismatch with the strength of Tolliver against Hillsman. And they're on the drive. Hillsman with a foul. And Dane Watts will go to the line. You're also talking Tolliver, a senior against a freshman Hillsman. And Brian Gregory, who's got Dayton on a roll in his fourth season to the big dance one time. And has such a young team with even more young talent coming. Brian Gregory really has the Dayton program again in high gear. Only one senior, Monty Scott, in the starting lineup and with one of the top recruiting classes coming in next year. Brian Gregory has taken the athleticism of the Dayton Flyers to a whole different Flyers level. The former assistant for Tom Izzo, he's a guy that works extremely hard on the recruiting side. He was one of the most feared guys, as you know, Tom, yep. in the Big Ten under Tom Izzo. Well, you talk about learning at the knee of some of college basketball's best. I mean, Brian Gregory started his career an assistant coach under Judd Heathcote, as well as Tom Izzo and Kevin O'Neill. On the drive at the other end, Monty Scott. 5-1 Dayton in transition. Porter and a reach. Nope, a travel called first. And the Dayton Flyers want to make Creighton pay in the open court and get it to your most athletic player. And Brian Roberts at the point guard makes the right decision, gives it to Monty Scott for the layup. That'll be a charge, or is it? Nope. Fortunate right there for Plummer. And you can clearly see that Dayton, whenever Creighton goes to full court pressure, Dayton is gonna attack the rack. <laughs> And no charge right there, just out of bounds, and let's play on. And Dana Altman is still screaming on to the men in the black and white shirts. Creighton switches up to a 2-3 zone. They do this often out of the out-of-bounds plays. Little on the drive, lost the handle. Blue Jays in the attacking zone. This is Funk with the left hand, gets his first bucket. Funk lost between 10 and 12 pounds. He's had the flu over the last couple of weeks. And he did not look good at the shoot-around today. He still looks weakened by that flu. Well, he looks good on this. He surveys the open court, and like a good off-guard should, takes it right to the rack, the simple play with the left hand off the glass. That's how you score 38 last year mm -hmm. against Dayton. And when great shooters get their rhythm off the layups, watch out later on. The basket gets huge. And he'll get a quick breather as we are nearly four minutes into this one. Dayton leading Creighton 5-3. to three. I remember, Nate Funk, you mentioned that he's been a little bit ill. They're going to give him a little bit of a blow for the TV timeout under 16. Nice move by Dana Altman. Sandoval now at the point for Dayton in the corner. Roberts had another good look. Knocked it down. His second tray. And one of the disadvantages of going to zone against the Dayton Flyers, you've got a zone buster in Brian Roberts. A block and then a foul with the body on Charles Little. Looked like a clean block, but then a body after the block. And Tolliver will be going to the line to shoot a pair when we come back. There's the body foul on Little. 8-3, Dayton off to an early lead. The Heisman Trophy. Be safe. Saturday at night. ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU. No studying for final exams, not tonight anyway, here in Dayton, Ohio. Flyers with the early lead, 8-3, to three, along with Mark Adams. I'm Tom Hamilton, and many will tell you again this year, especially with the RPI ratings, Mark, that the Missouri Valley Conference is the third-best conference right now in college basketball. Well, and they definitely are number three, especially when you look at last season with Bradley, Wichita State making it to the Sweet 16, and Missouri State to the quarterfinals of the NIT, and now with all of the upsets yep. in the Missouri Valley, Wichita State going on the road with two big wins at LSU and Syracuse, and everybody else in the Missouri Valley Conference is following suit right now. I think it's interesting, as you look there at Creighton coach Dana Altman, he told us today why the Missouri Valley is going to be so good this year. Of the 50 starters, 
38 returned from a year ago when they set four to the NCAA tournament. So imagine that kind of experience back this year. Well, and that is seniors against freshmen because all the high majors are now allowing to go out and recruit those kids that aren't going to the NBA. But you know what? I'll take a senior over a freshman just mm -hmm. about any day unless he might be Greg Oden. <laughs> well, we will check in on some of those upsets that have already taken place at halftime although you're starting to wonder if they're upsets no, they're just they're just good wins yep they're quality tournament wins for March is really what they are they get you in the NCAA tournament and Mark mentioned Greg Oden will also at halftime look at some of the top freshmen in the country in what is a bumper crop of freshmen and some of them are on display here tonight at the UD arena this is a junior though Brian Roberts on Creighton going back to man to man after Brian Roberts burned him on the zone. And the other way comes Isaac Miles. He is a true freshman for Creighton. Porter in the corner. And that's going to be a pushing foul, and that's going to go against Jimmy Binney. His first. Flyer foul number 33, Jimmy Binney, his first team. Nick Porter, a guy we talk a lot about power forwards. He's a power guard. He's a kid that has a great body. He puts the ball on the floor. Always a two-foot jump stop in the paint. He's so fundamental, and defensively, he's also physically tough. That's why Dana Altman had him in the starting lineup tonight. Five minutes into this ball game, Creighton with the ball. Dayton with an 8-4 to four advantage. These two teams pride themselves on their defense. It's been on display here in the first five-plus minutes. Tolliver, nice look down low. Nick Baugh. With a couple of fakes, had the ball partially blocked, tipped out, and here come the Flyers. Sandoval, he'll take the three. Tolliver with still another rebound. That's his third. You know, as a point guard, Andre Sandoval wanting to contribute early, but three blue jerseys underneath the basket all had defensive rebounding position. A point guard should pull it out right there. This is Porter inside the arc. He is short. And the shooting woes continue for the Creighton Blue Jays, who are now one for six from the floor. College basketball on ESPNU continues Thursday as the Michigan Wolverines take on the Miami Red Hawks. College basketball presented by Buffalo Wild Wings on ESPNU Thursday at 8 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Full court pressure employed by the Blue Jays. Let's see how the Flyers handle it. And now the Blue Jays semi call it off well, they really look for traps in the half court area and the Dayton Flyers have worked very hard the last two days of breaking pressure and trying to make Creighton pay for the full court pressure but so far Creighton pretty effective nice move inside and knocking it down as Norman Plummer and his game is starting to really come along after being out early this year for disciplinary reasons it came through with 19 points in the victory over Holy Cross just the other night. Norman Plummer starting to hit his stride inside. 10 to 4 Dayton. And Creighton does such a good job of spreading the floor. They, they really expose mismatches because one defender has to guard one offensive player. They are so spread out offensively. Shot clock at 6. That was a tough shot for Funk. And traveling. No, I guess there wasn't. <laughs> I, I don't know how that wasn't traveling, but in any case, Isaac Miles is called for a foul, and Dana Altman has the same puzzled look as we do. <laughs> 13 16 here in the first half. 10 to 4, Dayton. Dayton Flyers done a great job of moving the basketball and Norman Plummer making himself available right there and there's the mismatch against Nate Funk down low and the Dayton Flyers read it he gives up about four inches right there and Norman Plummer takes it right to the rack well Plummer a junior started as a freshman and sophomore probably would have started again this season had it not been for the disciplinary action but he has worked his way back into the good graces of Brian Gregory and that's a travel now in the Dayton front court. Brian Gregory urging his team to take care of the basketball. He said today that they feel they can exploit Creighton with transition. But he said if you don't handle the basketball and turn it over, that goes out the window. Well, and that's the recipe for success in any basketball game. And the Dayton Flyers last year turned the ball over often. 28 turnovers in the 91-90 double overtime loss. And the Dayton Flyers want to take care of the ball tonight. A moving screen out front on the big man, Anthony Tolliver. 
That'll be his first personal. And Dane Altman still looks a little bit bewildered on the sideline. You know, both of these head coaches, when you talk about Norman Plummer playing for Brian Gregory and, of course, Dana Altman. Now, Dana Altman, one thing that intrigues me, he lives in a red state, a Cornhusker football red state. But there's one blue city, and that's Omaha, Nebraska. They love their Blue Jays. 13,900 fans a night, they average. Marcus Johnson, freshman. He'll try it again. Nice fake. And another putback this time by Hillsman. And Kurt Hillsman, the freshman out of St. Henry's, Ohio, he's a guy when he gets those two big paws on the ball, he goes right to the rack. Biggest Dayton lead, a whistle away from the ball. And right now, this game being dominated by whistles as Kurt Hillsman will pick up the personal foul. Well, speaking of Omaha, ESPNU would like to welcome those of you now watching on Cox Cable Channel 220 in Omaha, Nebraska. Thanks for joining our family of networks. Well, because of Dana Altman, he has made that Nebraska basketball job a very difficult one because Creighton's got a better program right now than the Cornhuskers. 11.54 remaining in the first half here in Dayton, Ohio. A little rough here in the early going. Will their lights stay yellow? Will Saturday afternoon legends are born in all club. Saturday night. One college football player. Creighton Bucket. Uh, credit the Dayton defense. Right now, Dana Altman has to solve that puzzle offensively. Dayton has been getting into Nate Funk. They've done a good job with Anthony Tolliver down low. Tolliver 0 for 3 down the block. Kurt Hillsman so far more productive as the freshman than the senior. And Coach Altman was saying today that Creighton still is not in any kind of an offensive flow in this young season as you look at the seven turnovers to the six field goals. Well, and Josh Dotzler has been a guy who had a knee injury a year ago, and he has struggled to get back into the flow. We're going to have another foul. Fouls on number 34, Nick Bonds. Dayton able to get dribble penetration right there, and from the help that comes across, that leaves Norman Plummer wide open. Ty Morrison had to react to the dribble, which left Norman Plummer wide open on the left block. And Plummer at the foul line, a 71% free throw shooter. He's averaging eight points a game. And the Flyers with their biggest lead, 13 to 4, with 11.36 left here in the first half. This doesn't look anything like last year's high scoring affair in Omaha. You, know, you just got to think it's going to heat up, but both teams have done a good job of getting back defensively and forcing half court sets. Rebound Tolliver. He's been a giant on the board so far. Dayton on an 8 1 run now to open up a nine point advantage. For Norman Plummer battling Anthony Tolliver down low. They find Tolliver, but he draws a crowd. Kick out to Funk, and he's way off the mark. And what an unusual shot for Nate Funk. Usually that shot is down. He just seems like a guy that doesn't quite have his legs right now. And you wonder if he is. Still not where he was physically due to the flu that robbed him of 10, 12 pounds, and he doesn't have 10 pounds to lose. Plummer with the miss. Ba comes down with it. 13 to 4, Dayton. Creighton with the basketball. This is Nick Porter. And a rebound for Tolliver, who jams it home. Or Anthony Tolliver sprinted the floor, got position on the offensive glass, assuming the shot was going up right there for the stick back. 13 to 6, Dayton with the lead in the ball. Ten and a half to play. London Warren, the freshman, will bring it back to the point. Oh, there's a mismatch. Got, got Charles Little and Nate Funk down on the block. And a steal by Ty Morrison ahead to Porter. And a block by Monty Scott. That looked like an easy deuce, and Scott wouldn't give up on it. And that's the kind of effort that Brian Gregory is looking for. And Monty Scott delivers. 94 feet defense by Monty Scott. Shot clock at 10. Scott for three. 
Tolliver has his fifth rebound. Funk into the front court. He'll try it alone and wow. scores and a foul. Well, Nate Funk doesn't have his outside game going, but twice he has driven in for buckets and now goes to the line. Look at him survey the defense, and then the crossover dribble splits the defender, and a good enough athlete to finish the shoulder slant to the rack. Kiss it, Nate Funk. Nate Funk got off to a terrific start this season. Scored 28 points in Creighton's only loss to Nebraska. But he's had only 14 points in his last two games coming into tonight. And a lot of that due to the flu. But how do scores get going? They don't assume they're going to make threes. They take the ball to the basket. They draw contact, get scoring opportunities at the free throw line. Nate Funk is getting it done like a score. Marcus Johnson, who drew that foul, shaken up on the play. And so he heads to the Nate bench. He is the freshman out of St. Vincent, St. Mary's in Akron, Ohio. And the rebound is cleared out of there by Charles Little. And Both these teams very deep, as you see Creighton will play 11. Little draws the foul and gets the bucket. And here's the strength of Charles Little. Coming off the screen, Monty Scott recognizes the switch, goes up strong, draws contact. The big sophomore out of Tennessee, huge shoulders that fill up the lane. He's very, very strong around the basket. 9.20 left in the half. Miles, it's over his head. And Creighton just completely out of sync offensively with their fifth turnover of the night. 15 to 8 Dayton with the lead in the ball and 9 19 to play we showed you Dayton goes 11 deep Dayton goes 9 deep so these two teams are not going to be able to wear each other out a lot of mistakes though in this ballgame well Creighton likes a high reward high risk high reward defense they will get out after you they will trap you they will force turnovers And Dayton, with their rangy athleticism, they cause problems as well for offense. They get a lot of deflections. This is Little on the baseline. Slices inside, missed the shot. Rebound cleared out of there by Nensu. So far, Dayton looks like the stronger team in the paint. Mm -hmm. And Dayton is taking advantage of it by getting it in the paint nearly every possession. This is Dotzler, still not 100%. You see that brace on the right knee. And Brian Roberts got kneed in the thigh coming over that screen. And a strip down low by Little. Into the front court, Sandoval. On the drive, tried to get the foul called, didn't get a call. It'll be Creighton basketball. And that's a simple case of Andre Sandoval trying to do too much, really forcing the action. And Brian Gregory right there saying to Andre Sandoval, slow down, settle down, get into a rhythm. 15 to 8, Dayton with the lead, Creighton with the ball. 8.15 left in the first half from Ohio. Dotzler with the ball, tore up his knee near the end of last season, and he is still not 100%. Had major knee surgery, wears that brace on the right knee. But he is a key to Creighton because he's a true point guard. And he has it stripped away. He recovers. And Creighton with seven on the shot clock. Shot clock at four. Dotzler has to hurry. Boy, is it physical. Sandoval leaves it for Benny. We've got bodies all over the place. 7.40 left here in the first half, and we've got a Dayton entry on the other end of the court. It's Monty Scott. He floor. is just now getting up. You said it, Mark. This has been an extremely physical, and watch this layup. Andre Sandoval that time makes the good decision, gives it up for Jimmy Benny. And only two bodies hit the deck that time. There is 7.40 left from the UD Arena. Thus far, Dayton in control, leading Creighton 17 to 8. Unfortunately, to help you feel it faster.
There's zero sugar, zero net carbs, and only as much caffeine as a cup of coffee. The two ounce shot takes just seconds to drink, and in minutes, you're feeling awake, alert, and productive. And that feeling lasts for hours. So if your energy drink makes you crash, switch to 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. Find out if 5-Hour Energy is right for you. It's available at these fine stores. Or for more information, go to 5-HourEnergy.com. One of the great home court advantages in college basketball, and the students are a big reason why. Dayton on top of Creighton, 17-8. Of course, Creighton has that same kind of advantage when they're back home in Omaha. A look at our stat track tonight. And Creighton just can't get off the mark offensively. Now, Nate Fox, certainly the focal point defensively for the Dayton Flyers, along with Anthony Tolliver down low. And so far, the Flyers have been in position every possession and have taken away the offensive thrust of the Creighton Blue Jays. Funk with the ball. He'll drive it and kick it into the corner. The freshman Morrison rattles in and out. And we'll have a pushing foul, and it's going to go against Dayton. Sixth team foul on the Flyers. It's on Andre Sandoval. Creighton hasn't done anything from behind the arc as of yet. But I like the execution of the last half court set. Good spacing by Creighton, good dribble penetration. Found Ty Morrison wide open in the corner. That's Creighton Blue Jay offensive basketball. And now we're going to have a moving screen call. And that's on Tolliver, and that's his second and the sixth team foul. And that's a wide body that Dana Altman can't afford to lose. And if I'm the Dayton Flyers right now, I am going to attack Anthony Tolliver on the block and try to pick up his third foul right now. And he's matched up with London Warren in the corner. That's a quick dismiss match on the perimeter. Dayton should give him the ball and go one-on-one -on -one with Tolliver. Under seven to play in the half. Dayton with the ball leading by nine. Shot clock at ten. This is London Warren. He is extremely quick. Binney for three. Tolliver with another rebound. His seventh. But Creighton is not taking Tolliver out. There's nobody at the scorer's bench. Harris Morrison, I should say. And another turnover on the Blue Jays. Dana Altman's clubs only played four games and after tonight they've got to take on a terrific Xavier ball club that'll at least be in Omaha then they go to Fresno State and from there they go to Hawaii but look at that combined record of their three opponents including tonight the Dayton Flyers now Dana Altman he's not scared is he no he'll play anybody anywhere Brian Gregory's the same way with Dayton We'll show you their schedule later. Binney, wide open. He was almost stunned to be so wide open. Post to post pass right there. Norman Plummer getting double teamed and Jimmy Pinney with a knife cut to the basket. Biggest Dayton lead. And another offensive foul. This is going to go against Dane Watts and that's going to be two on him. And the double comes to Norman Plummer. Watch the double come. And there's a slip right there. Jimmy Binney goes behind. Just a nice basketball cut right there. There's the double. There's Binney who cuts behind. And nobody helps on the backside, unlike Creighton defense. Now Creighton trying a little trap. Bad pass by Binney as it is picked off. This is Dotzler. And he'll reset the offense. Ninsu from three and he knocks it down. Well, how bad did Creighton need that basket? And Brees Ninsu just rose up. He's very athletic, only 28% from the three point line, but right there looked balanced and confident. Dayton up 19 to 11. Binney lets it fly a little short. Boy, Dayton crashing the boards to no avail. Porter into the front court. Porter on the drive, draws the foul, gets the bucket. Nick and Creighton on a mini run. Marcus Johnson with a second foul. And here is your power guard. He goes away, lightens up just a little bit, wants to draw contact, draws that contact, but Nick Porter is strong enough to finish. And now Nick Porter at the foul line, where he is an 85% free throw shooter. 
I think so. he's a big key for this basketball team. You know that Nate Funk's going to get some things done. You know Anthony Tolliver's going to be tough down low. You know that Josh Goetzler can run the offense. Now if a Nick Porter can step up and, and get some power baskets at the guard position, this team becomes more and more dangerous. Six unanswered points for the Blue Jays. But that is ended by Brian Roberts. Well, when Creighton goes full court press, Brian Roberts sees it as a scoring opportunity and making the Blue Jays pay. Roberts has six. Ninsu slips inside. We're under five to play. 21-16, Dayton. But what a pick by Manny Gaku. And he can set a big screen. Uh-oh. Little. And count it. Norman Plummer as Dayton continues to crash the offensive glass. The Dayton Flyers are flying to the offensive glass as Charles Little takes it up strong. Norman Plummer is right there along with Monty Scott. The Flyers are flying to the backside boards whenever they see a shot. They're jamming the ball to the rim. And Plummer off that 19-point performance has five here tonight. Make it six now. Dayton's leads back to eight, 435 left in the half. Creighton was a preseason top 20 team. The first time that's happened to a Missouri Valley Conference team in 25 years. They got knocked out of the poll when they lost badly in Lincoln. And Creighton with another miscue. Well, the Dayton defense has simply been stifling. And Dana Altman right now, who certainly is known as a guy to expose mismatches in the half-court set, and now with Nate Funk coming back in the basketball game, no real score in the game for Creighton over the last couple minutes. Now Funk back in the game. And Dana Altman still looking for that group that'll start to gel. Dayton with the ball, leading by eight. Dayton coach Brian Gregory said tonight's game is a monster game as far as the Flyers are concerned. That's how highly he thinks of Creighton. Well, this is a team that only won 14 games last year, Tom, so they're looking for confidence and they can get it tonight. And Little has it. Oh, it's again a 10-point game. Just too big and too strong, Charles Little. And Gaku will go to the line, drawing the foul down low. That'll go against Plummer. So 344 left here in the first half from Dayton. Flyers up 10. If it's Husky D. All the comforts of home at the UD Arena with the Flyers leading the Blue Jays 26 to 16. And you can catch the future stars today as ESPN News coverage of high school basketball continues Thursday night. Lance Storch, Jeremy Price, and the Columbia Eagles face James Hickson and the Wheeler Wildcats. The Old Spice High School Showcase presented by Nike on ESPN U Thursday at 6:30 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Seems like it was only yesterday that we were watching LeBron James. And that seemed to be the start of high school basketball going national. Well, one of LeBron's former teammates, Marcus Johnson, is a team member for the University of Dayton Fire. Starts for them as a freshman now. Gaku missing the first free throw. He is one for five from the line this season. He is a native of France. He came off the bench, did a nice job, set a screen early on to free up one of his teammates. That time gets an offensive rebound. Draws the foul. You like guys that come off the bench and fill their role. And for Gaku, it's a guy that's going to be physical, draw contact, go get rebounds and set screens. And that's what he's doing. Creighton now trying to employ some full court pressure to rattle the Flyers. Sandoval, who's back from that broken foot, a one man press breaker. Sandoval. Broke the foot, had a titanium screw put in it. He was supposed to be out four to six weeks. He was back in 19 days. The bionic man, they call him here <laughs> in the Miami Valley. Shot clock at nine. Roberts 
He's got an open look. Somebody forgot to pick him up. And Brian Roberts was open because Norman Plummer set the screen, then rolled to the basket and actually pinned the defender. And Roberts has 11, and Dayton has its biggest lead, 29-17, under three to play. Boy, if you're Creighton, you can't lose sight of Brian Roberts. Well, the Dayton Flyers are starting to smell the kill right now. Defensively, they have been so stingy. Nate Funk, tough shot, knocks it down. He has done his damage in the paint tonight. Well, you need your best player to step up when Anthony Tolliver is sitting on the bench and Nate Funk is answering the call. He has six. Tolliver on the bench with two personals. Under two and a half to play. Dayton with the ball and a ten-point advantage. Sandoval. This is Little. Inside. Nice dish. And Plummer got hacked. Watts has picked up his third personal. Dane Watts, the junior forward, has three personal Dane fouls. And Tolliver is on the bench with two. And Dana Altman has a dilemma. And so he goes with a smaller lineup as he'll bring in Pierce Hipma. Meanwhile, Plummer at the line to shoot a pair. And how important is Anthony Tolliver in the low block? Very important, especially defensively. The Dayton Flyers are having their way, and I'm very impressed with Norman Plummer, Charles Little, and Monty Scott with their interior passing tonight. And without the shot blocker, Anthony Tolliver on the floor, Creighton seems defenseless down low right now. They really do. Meanwhile, Plummer having another big night off the bench. Mark mentioned Wednesday night he had 19 in the win over Holy Cross. Seven tonight off the bench. And Dayton with an 11 point lead. Nearing the two minute mark. And Dana Altman has to go back to Tolliver getting back in the game. He missed the jump hook. Here comes Sandoval. Scott in the front court. You got to go in the post again. Go after Tolliver down low with two fouls. And the guy that's being guarded by Tolliver is Plummer, who's having a good night. Dayton at six and one. They've already beaten Louisville. This would be a huge one tonight. Open look, Plummer. Well, every time Dayton draws a defender, they look for the unselfish pass, the extra pass that time from Brian Roberts. He can not only score, but he makes his teammates better. Nine off the bench. Hipma with a miss. Here comes Sandoval. Dayton in command. Plummer again. Funk, the rookie, Miles with a miss. Little the rebound. Well, that's probably not the shot that Dana Altman wants. One passing shot is not going to get it done for the Creighton Blue Jays. 101 to play first half. And Mark, this has been a clinic by Dayton, up 32 to 19. And Brian Roberts is having another huge night against the Creighton Blue Jays. Well, he simply has not missed. He opened the game right in front of the Blue Jay bench and decided to provide a facial to Anthony Tolliver from deep. Then he bangs the three from the opposite corner with Tolliver in his face again. Then a little bit of a dribble, pop it up, knock it down. Brian Roberts, Pogos, grip courts it from three. It's been Brian Roberts. B-Rob has been good. Brian Roberts with 11 points hasn't missed a shot tonight. You know, he's been kind of streaky. The first three games this season, Roberts averaged 27 points a game. His last four, he's averaged 15. But tonight, he looks like he did the first three times out. Tom, it's a great point, and you know what? He did not score as well over the last several games. But look at his assist to turnover ratio. 25 yeah. assists, 18 turnovers. The majority of those assists are because defenses are keying on him. He's making everybody else better. He is a guy that's played the point. He can play the two guard. One of those combo guards now that have become so valuable in the college game. Roberts on the wing under a minute to play. Dayton with a 13 point lead. Sandoval for three. Boy, that was a bad looking shot. And Tolliver trying to Keep away from that third foul, has the rebound. Tough pass inside, jump ball, possession arrow favors the Blue Jays. So another opportunity for Dana Altman's Blue Jays, and coming up at the half, 
We'll get you updated on what's happening around college basketball with the top 25. We'll talk about the outstanding freshman class, highlights, and stats. Well, I would think that Nate Funk would have to get a quality touch and a quality shot on this possession. Boy, Tolliver bricks it. And again, you can see what Dana Altman was talking yeah. about with the shoot-around. No flow offensively. They're just not in any kind of a rhythm. And now Dayton will play for one, and the UD crowd comes to its feet. Look for the on-ball screen for Brian Roberts. He'll make the decision where the ball goes. Roberts, little shake and bake. Pass deflected, and they will not get the shot off. And so the first half ends with Dayton playing defensively about as perfect a half as you can play. Brian Gregory wanted to come out and pressure and deny Nate Funk the basketball and shut down the inside. They've done that well. Wow, what a display by the Flyers. After 20 minutes, Dayton leads Creighton by 13 points. Let's face this time. And eliminate your career who started working part some of the high-flying halftime entertainment. Dayton with a 13-point lead. Let's check top 25 action. Defending champ Florida rolling over Providence tonight. Michigan State has suddenly started to put things together. Duke in a tussle with Holy Cross. That's a team that Dayton beat earlier this week. Boy, the Butler Bulldogs are for real. How about UConn winning big? And Maryland. Has a big lead in the second half. A lot of people think Pitt has a chance to win it all. They're ranked second and unbeaten and a big halftime lead over Crosstown rival Duquesne. Air Force on top and Memphis getting shellacked in Knoxville. Well, we've got more basketball coming your way tomorrow night. The Michigan Wolverines take on the Miami Red Hawks on ESPNU. College basketball presented by Buffalo Wild Wings on ESPNU, Thursday at 8 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. The numbers of Courtney Sims of the Wolverines and Nathan Peavy from the Miami Red Hawks. Hope you'll enjoy that ball game tomorrow night. Meanwhile, we're at halftime here at the UD Arena. A surprising blowout to this point. Two-man batting trainers are great. It's instant feedback. You can practice it's illustrated kids. Wow, oh, the first month. Of a while since college basketball felt a strong presence of newcomers. And here's a preview of some of this season's talented freshmen. For now, the days of jumping from high school to the pros are over. College hoops will once again feel a true freshman impact. Expectations are high for the newcomers as fans hope for a Carmelo-like season from one of them. Now let's take a look at this class of 2010's big names with Big Game. We start out with Greg Oden out of Ohio State. This two-time National Player of the Year owns the paint on both ends of the floor. Already named the second coming of Bill Russell, Odin brings 341 career blocks and three consecutive Indiana State titles with him to Columbus. Off-season wrist surgery has postponed his debut, although he did play last Saturday. Then it's Texas forward Kevin Durant, the highest-ranked prospect in Texas hoop history. Durant averaged 24 points, 10 rebounds a game as a senior. Guard skills in a forward's body make it seem easy for the All-American to bomb from long range or take it to the rack. The Longhorns will rely on the 6'9 forward to carry the load this season because it's most likely his last. And don't forget about Ty Lawson, the outstanding point guard from North Carolina. The Heels landed the perfect point to run Roy Williams' fast break offense. Lawson led Oak Hill Academy to a 42-1 record as a senior, averaging 23 points, 9 assists a game. The 2006 McDonald's All-American brings blazing speed and pure point guard skills to an already deep North Carolina roster. Chase Buttinger, the outstanding forward at Arizona. This McDonald's All-American game co-MVP averaged 34 points, 11 rebounds, and four assists in his final prep season. Now, Buttinger is a former volleyball star and is an explosive scorer who can knock down the three. Lute Olsen's Wildcats will be a force to reckon with with him in March. Then there's Thaddeus Young out of Georgia Tech, bringing an immediate toughness to a young Georgia Tech squad. 
The 6'8 McDonald's All-American averaged 27 points, 13 rebounds, three blocks as a senior. Expect the Yellow Jackets to utilize his athleticism and arsenal of power dunks to lead them back into the upper echelon of the ACC. And then there's Wayne Ellington out of North Carolina. Already having the rep as a sharpshooter, Ellington scores in bunches, and he knows how to drain the three. The McDonald's All-American three-point contest winner brings consistent perimeter scoring and a no-fear attitude to the heels. Look for the 6'4 guard to get a lot of playing time while knocking down big shots throughout his career. The road to Atlanta will be interesting as a newcomer could be the hero on any given night. With the NBA on hold, College Hoops fans are in for a thrilling season. The freshman impact is back. Well, that's a look at some of the outstanding freshmen. And a lot of people, Mark, will tell you, again, because of the NBA rule, this might be the best freshman class in a long time, if not forever. Well, it's the best freshman class I can certainly remember. And thank goodness that the NBA and the NCAA were able to come together with an agreement that allows guys like Greg Oden to play in the college experience. And what's going to be interesting to see now is how many of these young men enjoy the experience so much mm -hmm. that they forego maybe another year or two or three before they go to the, NCAA, to the NBA. That would be a wonderful thing for college basketball. And I think a great thing for these young men. Also, Mark, we've heard some coaches say, Guys that may come for their freshman year may find out they're exposed a little bit, that they have more to work on, thus they've learned in college that they're not ready and they will stay some extra that's, years. That's exactly right, Tom. There's a big difference from playing a high school basketball game and playing against the North Carolinas of the world. And that's what really a lot of these young men are finding about now with all the upsets mm -hmm. in Division I basketball. And we'll talk about those as well tonight. But those young freshmen, those guys are coming out having to play against juniors and seniors at what we call the mid-major programs and some of them are getting beat on a regular basis right now. Well, and I got to believe that you've got a few more freshmen you'd love to add to that list because it is such a deep class. Well, I really like the two choices of Greg Oden, certainly. He's a dominant big guy. I got a chance to go to Columbus and watch him work out, and he's only playing left-handed right now, which is going to make him a better shot blocker in the long term. Bill Russell, of course, one of the great shot blockers of all time, and Oden now using his left hand more will be even more effective defensively because right-handers will shoot mm -hmm. into him. But this is a guy that dominates just with his left hand and he's right handed. I love Kevin Durant. He's a guy that can run gun and have some fun. He fits right into Rick Barnes his wide open offense. But the guy that wasn't mentioned that I'm surprised is Daquan Cook. This is a guy when I walked into the gym three weeks ago and I watched Ohio State. The first question I asked who's that guy and it was Daquan Cook and Dan Peters who's an old friend of mine told me Mark that's a pro and Dan of course was the assistant to Bob Huggins at Cincinnati the former head coach at Youngstown State Dan Peters knows talent and I saw a very talented young man and Daquan Cook well you speak about talent Mark there's an awful lot of talent with the two schools involved in tonight's game and their respective conferences the Missouri Valley and the Atlantic 10 they do not take a back seat to anybody Tom these two conferences have been giant killers this year and I love the Missouri Valley Conference Wichita State led by Mark Turgeon have gone on the road and knocked off Syracuse and LSU Northern Iowa that's a ball club that has done a great job going on the road beating Iowa and then their state rival Iowa State as well Missouri State with a huge win over Wisconsin Southern Illinois over Virginia Tech Bradley over DePaul and Rutgers when you talk about the Missouri Valley you've got the Sean O'Geary's the PJ Kuznards at Wichita State you've got Brooks McGowan at Northern Iowa you got Barry Henson leading the way with Blake Ahern as a guy that can knock down 25 points a game and Jamal Tatum also very effective for Southern Illinois there are so many talented players in the Missouri Valley Conference and when you talk about the Atlantic 10 this is a conference that used to really fold a little bit when they played against Big East mm -hmm. schools. But this year, Xavier, led by Stanley Burrell, and what a fine young coach in Sean Miller, knocking off Villanova. Dayton with a huge victory, led by Brian Roberts, who we're seeing tonight, knocking off Rick Pitino and Louisville. Temple over Rutgers and George Washington. What a wonderful job Carl Hobbs has done. And Seth Greenberg took it on the chin to a very talented George Washington basketball team. The A-10 and the Missouri Valley Conference are two mids that are playing big right now. And it's only December 6th. Absolutely. <laughs> when Mark and I return, we'll take a look at the first half highlights and stats. A terrific ball game here tonight at the UD Arena as we've got Creighton and Dayton. All of that still to come. <laughs> only wall grab. You guys run the double. Cool. Now.
42 to 19. Let's check some of the highlights from the first 20 minutes. Uh, Nate Funk has been the go-to guy for the Creighton Blue Jays. Three for six from the floor, and he did it off the dribble. Didn't settle for the three. Instead, made plays coming off the dribble, attacking the basket, able to get two-foot jump stop and knock it down. Nate Funk has been pretty good offensively, but I'll tell you what, Brian Roberts has been great. Perfect from the floor. Banging from inside the two-point line. And then just rises up, knocks down the three off the pick and roll. Brian Roberts, four for four from the floor tonight. 11 points, three for three from downtown. Nate Funk, three for six. The rest of the Blue Jays only four for 17. He needs help. It's a rematch of these terrific guards. Last year when Creighton won, Funk had 38. Roberts had 34. Ironically, when that game ended, Dayton said, well, thank heavens we'll never have to see Nate Funk again. <laughs> Next game, he tore the labrum in his shoulder diving for a ball and ended up with a medical red shirt, and that's why he's back for another season. On the other end, this is Funk from the corner. That's his first long one of the night. So just like that, it's a 10-point game. And a deflection, and Creighton trying to come out with a little more energy here in the second half. Yeah, I think Dana Altman has definitely challenged this basketball team to raise their game. There are the numbers from the first 20 minutes. Oh, look at that shooting for Creighton. And not only shooting, then 10 turnovers on top of that. That is not Dana Altman basketball. But credit to the Dayton defense. This is the freshman Hillsman backing in on Tolliver, who's playing with two fouls. Dane Watts is on the Creighton floor with three. Shot clock at eight. Brian Roberts with a floater. Tipped up by Little. Tolliver with his ninth rebound. A breakout. Porter lost the handle, but it was deflected out. But you can't convince the Dayton student section. <laughs> But give credit to Monty Scott. Remember in the first half when he blocked the shot in transition defense, that time getting a deflection, stopping Nick Porter again in the open court. So Creighton with the ball, Dayton with a 10-point lead. We're a minute into the second half from the UD Arena, which opened in 1969. Seats over just 13,000. Most of those seats with a red-shirted body in them tonight. A three ball, this time it's Watts knocking it down. And Nate Funk opens the, get, the second half with a three and then sets up Watts for the next three with an unselfish pass. Nate Funk making teammates better as Brian Roberts did in the first half for Dayton. And it's a seven point game. This is Hillsman banging against Tolliver, fading away and he knocks it down. A freshman out of St. Henry, Ohio. Well, we talked about the importance of that matchup. Tolliver, the senior against Hillsman, the freshman. So far, Hillsman has held his own yes. down low. Creighton maintains possession. There you get a good look at the freshman, Hillsman. And ironically, Dayton starts two freshmen. You don't see that very often for a team that's got a chance to play come March Funk on the drive drew the foul that'll go against Marcus Johnson I do believe well, I love the way Nate Funk has opened up the half banging the three now he puts it on the floor against Marcus Johnson drawing contact this guy is a score and creates points and right there drawing the contact and now going to the line bangs a three sets up Watts for a three then draws the foul Nate Funk the fifth-year senior out of Sioux City, Iowa, as Marcus Johnson picks up his third personal. There's the, the former high school teammate of LeBron James. He's second on the all-time scoring list at St. Vincent St. Mary's to, you guess who? <laughs> Funk knocks them both down. So Creighton's back to within seven. And we're going to see more aggressive full-court pressure now from Creighton. They're really going to try to get out and force some turnovers. Nice job of denying the inbound. To start this second half, Creighton has outscored Dayton 8-2. to two. Dayton has not had many transition baskets tonight, but their half-court offense has been superb. And it's been that interior passing, getting the ball in the paint. And turnover by Dayton. 
Well, th this looks almost like a reversal of the first half, Mark. Creighton the aggressor and, and Dayton sloppy to start the second half. Well, it's a game of adjustments. And Dana Altman is a guy that's well respected as the dean of coaches of the Missouri Valley Conference of making those adjustments. He said, Nate Funk, you're going to get the ball. We're going to put the we're going to put this game on your shoulders. You are going to deliver on the offense better defensively. Guys, you've got to pick it up as a team, not as individuals, but as a team. And that's what they have done. Porter drives and scores. And it's all Creighton here in the second half. And Dayton's Brian Gregory says, we got to make an adjustment and calls a timeout. So the Creighton Blue Jays playing like a team that many feel can make a deep run into March. The Heisman Trophy presentation, Saturday at 8 on ESPN. There's an accident in this country every five seconds. Allstate thinks that's too often. So they have rewards to encourage you to drive safely. Now, for each year you go without having one of these, you'll get $100 off your deductible. It's called deductible rewards. It's time to make the world a better place to drive. It's Allstate stand. Are you in good hands? Steve Nash. second half Creighton has come out on a blitz and has gone from a 13 point deficit to back to within five and they've hit their first three shots here in the second half Hillsman with the only Dayton bucket forcing Brian Gregory to call the timeout and Dayton coach Brian Gregory said today in his mind Creighton's a better team than they were a year ago when they nearly won the Missouri Valley Conference and may, just barely missed getting into the big dance. And the only reason Creighton didn't get into the tournament were the injuries to Nate uh, Funk. Exactly. And then to their point guard after that as Josh Dotzler went down. This is Plummer. Dumps it down, but it was deflected. Funk comes the other way with it for Creighton. And out of a timeout, Dayton doesn't even get a shot off. Well, and Creighton, if they can answer right here, we've got ourselves a basketball game and an ill-advised shot right there with Anthony Tolliver at the top of the key. I think Dana Alba would like to have that one back. Well, he was just standing out there flat-footed and barely grazed the iron. And now a reach-in foul is going to go against the freshman, Ty Morrison. Creighton fouls on number 21, Ty Morrison, in his first team's first. And inside the game, let's take a look at the Dayton Flyers exposing the mismatch of Norman Plummer versus Nate Funk right there inside. That's 6-6 six, six against 6-1 six, and a half, and 6-6 six, six is going to win that battle. And now the pick and roll by Norman Plummer. Look at him roll off right there, and he's going to pin the defender on his backside. That leaves Brian Roberts wide open and Plummer open in the paint as well. Good execution by the Dayton Flyers. But that all came in the first half. Now Dayton trying to get it going again. They've only scored two points here in the first four minutes of the second half. Well, you got to think Ryan Roberts is going to get the basketball and make a play. A nice job of making him pick up the dribble. Shot clock at 10. Tough shot on the baseline. Basket interference. That'll go against Monty Scott. He just got too anxious. So we've got a timeout. And this Dayton flyer crowd is a little subdued. Are you missed two shows already. When is red? Gentleman said, "Hey, man, that'll make you sober." <laughs> you know what? Tom, I'm Irish Catholic and a former coach. I'd be sober too with 6:30 a.m. practices. Anthony Tolliver and the Creighton Blue Jays probably got an earful at halftime. And Tolliver almost on cue with an authoritative dunk. Off Creighton's Isaac Miles, who tried to convince the officials. Anthony Tolliver right on cue, and the defense comes up. And he steps behind for the rim rattler down low. The nice look by Nick Porter on the bounce pass. And Anthony Tolliver with the flush. And Creighton with all the momentum. This is an entirely different looking Creighton team. Dayton as well. You know, they call this place the Dayton Decibel Dungeon. It, it sounds more like a morgue right now. 
as Creighton has simply dominated in the second half. Baugh runs it down. The freshman Miles and everything going Creighton's way. They can't miss. And we are tied at 34 as Creighton has outscored Dayton 15 to 2 here in the second half. Wow. Creighton has simply attacked every possession on defense and offense. Almost a charge, but a big bucket for Sandoval. Dayton back up two. Porter on the other end. Oh, look at that strip. How about that strip by Plummer? It'll be a possession arrow favoring Creighton. They'll maintain possession after a terrific defensive play by Norman Plummer. For the help defense by Norman Plummer, the rule defensively has dropped to the level of the ball. That's exactly what Norman Plummer did. He didn't even have to leave his feet. Look at the second half shooting. A complete reversal from the first 20 minutes. Well, remember how it started. Nate Funk with a three. Yep. Nate Funk with an assist. Then Nate Funk driving, giving it up, and drawing, drawing the foul. He's the guy that got this motor running. Dayton coach Brian Gregory says Nate Funk's the kind of player that can win a game single-handedly. Well, now he's getting a little help from his friends as well. Isaac Miles knocking it down. Dane Watts knocking it down. Anthony Tolliver flushing it. Watts down low had it blocked. And Dayton looks like they've got a little more energy now. 14-22 left in the game. Dayton's lead is two. Well, it sure didn't look like, on paper anyway, that this would be a blowout either way. That's why the halftime score was so surprising, but now we've got a heck of a game. That's a travel. Plummer just got too anxious. He saw a lane. Brian Gregory's Flyers with a two-point lead. There's a good look at Brian Gregory. He says, you know, having coached under Judd Heathcote and Tom Izzo can say the same thing. If you ever need a coach to put you in your place, just pick up the phone, call Judd, and he'll tell you how bad your team is. You know, I worked for Calvin Sampson, who also was an assistant under Judd, and so I understand that feeling exactly. <laughs> but that's how you get better as a coach. You need mentors who are not going to candy coat it, whether it be basketball or in life. You need people that are going to tell you the truth, and Brian Gregory has some friends that will tell him the <laughs> truth. Dayton called for the foul. Flying foul, number 33, Jimmy Binney. That's Jimmy Binney picking it up. There's a good look at Brian Gregory, who's done such a tremendous job here, and not even four years in Dayton. And with the young players he has now and more on the way, they are going to be an A-10 power. They signed a top 50 player in Chris Wright from here in the Dayton area. Wow, a holding foul on Binney. Yeah, he's supposed to be a special player, isn't he? He's a phenomenal player. And then Devin Searcy from up in Detroit, a kid that's real long and lean. Boy, I don't know about that foul there. This is Dotzler. Funk for three. Almost an air ball. Funk runs it down in the paint. Tolliver kept it alive. Roberts gets hammered, and it's Creighton's ball after Watts knocked Roberts out of bounds. Brian Gregory almost went down to that baseline. Well, sometimes the more aggressive team gets rewarded, and there may have been a foul right there on Tolliver, so turnabout is fair play. But Tolliver gets up and stays with it. It is physical here tonight. We saw it the first half, and they have ratcheted it up a few notches here in the second half. Funk on the wing. His club down two, driving for the tie. That was nearly basket interference. It's a layup for Funk, and we're tied at 36. Boy, and Nate Funk has brought energy to this team. That's what seniors do. They lead. Sandoval with a quick three and a miss and a breakout for Miles. Sandoval deflects it. Great save by Roberts. Sandoval into the front court. Game tied at 36, seven minutes into the second half. 
when you got to think that Brian Roberts would be a guy that would have the basketball in his hands at some point on this possession. Get it to your best player and let him go to work. This is Benny. Shot clock at 13. Roberts now has the ball. He's had a quiet second half. He hasn't scored. 11 in the first half. Shot clock at three. Benny on the drive. A reach in foul on Dotzler. That'll be his first. Second on Creighton. When Dayton gets in trouble, they give it to Brian Roberts. And when Creighton got in trouble, they got the ball to Nate Funk. And he makes plays off the dribble. He splits three defenders right there and still gets the ball to the basket. What a quick first step by Nate Funk. You know, he spent the summer with Kyle Corver. He roomed with Kyle when Kyle played at Creighton. He's learned a lot from him. Charles Little knocking it down. Dayton up two. Kyle Corver, one of the all-time Creighton dates. One of the all-time Creighton greats, I should say, as a turnover on the Creighton Blue Jays. But these two schools have such a rich basketball history for Creighton. You think of Paul Silas, Kyle Corver, and Bob Gibson was a heck of a basketball player before he turned his magic to baseball as the turnovers continue to mount. And of course, for Dayton, the likes of Donnie May. Roosevelt Chapman and Johnny Davis these two programs rich in basketball history Warren trap it still belongs to Dayton in the backcourt 12 9 left in this one is Dayton has a two-point lead and Dayton has not cashed in on the mistakes of Creighton so far It'll be interesting to see now how Dayton responds to the, the rush of the Creighton offense and defense. There's no question that the Blue Jerseys have had more energy here in the second half. We've got a timeout. We've played just over eight minutes in the second half. We have a doozy. College football. It's tourney time. And the fields of glory were set to the afternoon, but over and over again all season long. Players rise to the occasion in big games, and Nate Funk has done that. And this was a guy who has not been feeling well. I'd hate to see it when he's completely healthy with the dipsy and the do for two. Out on the three-point line, Nate Funk lets it fly to open the half. And look at this guy split defenders, take it to the rack. You think time spent in Philadelphia with Kyle Korver was well spent? I think so, Nate Funk. Funk now on the bench. London Warren having trouble handling the pressure. Boy, Porter is just so physical on him, and now Porter gets called for the bump. That's his first, team fourth. Porter is built like yeah. football players. He? he is. I think he's one of the most physical perimeter players I've seen in the country. I mean, the guy just off the dribble and defensively, he's constantly getting after you from a physical standpoint, bumping you. Benny. Strong on the three. Miles with a rebound. Creighton looking for the tie or the lead with a three. A good decision right there by Isaac Miles and Nick Porter pulling the ball back out and getting set. Funk on the bench, and so now the offense looks for somebody else to deliver, and Porter shuffled the feet. Boy, we've had a lot of turnovers in this game. Well, in the double overtime game last year when Nate Funk went for 38 he played 45 minutes in that game wow you can see why when that kid sits down Dana Altman's offense does not look the same and again he's sitting more because he is still not fully recovered from that bout with the flu that cost him 10 to 12 pounds I'll tell you what the way he plays I want that flu yeah that'll be a reach in foul on Hitma and Funk has had all the rest he needs into the Blue Jays, number 10, Nate Funk, for Pierce Hitler. Uh, if, if he looks at also Dana Altman and says, Coach, I need to come out, Altman maybe just turn away. I'm just ignoring. <laughs> I don't think Nate Funk's coming out the rest of the night unless it's during a TV timeout. And Funk's one of those great college stories. He was not thought to be a superstar coming out of Sioux City, Iowa. But he has blossomed in Omaha and has just had a tremendous career. Yeah, he's such a great competitor. And I love a guy that separates his shoulder, basically diving for a loose ball yep. against the ball. That kid, he goes full go every night. You tear the labrum, that's a serious injury. 
Shot clock at 10. Roberts, one on one against Miles. Now the double team. And a steal by Funk. Lost it back to Roberts. He just did beat the shot clock. Gets his own rebound. And he gets tripped by Funk. Sixth team foul on Creighton. Creighton Beg your pardon. Nick Porter is charged with a second. Well, Creighton, that's preparation. They read it perfectly. And Nate Funk got in the passing lane, but Brian Roberts stayed with the play. Speaking of hard-nosed guards, Nate Funk, Brian Roberts, you gotta go a long ways to find two guys as tough as these two competitors are. Part of the reason for that date and drought is that Brian Roberts hasn't scored in the second half. Well, look at Isaac Miles. He's matched up with Brian Roberts. He's not leaving him. There'll be no help off of Brian Roberts. Dayton needs somebody to step up. This is the freshman, Marcus Johnson. Johnson! Halfway through the second half, Dayton 40, Creighton 36. This is Tolliver with that jump hook, and it's a two-point game. Tolliver has 10 rebounds to go with his seven points. Now both teams seem to be settling in for just a long night of basketball. We may go to a few overtimes tonight. Fine by me. Benny got it. Jimmy Benny started off the season 0 for 14. But over the last eight shots, he's banged five threes. This kid's starting to heat it up. And the Dayton crowd's back in it. Watts for three. He counters. And Creighton with a timeout. 43-41. Dayton with a lead. 9-13 to play. Well, we've got another good one coming your way tomorrow night as college basketball on ESPNU features Michigan and Miami of Ohio. College basketball presented by Buffalo Wild Wings on ESPNU Thursday at 8, 8, 8 Eastern. If you'd like more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Deion Harris concluding his four-year career in Ann Arbor. That's a Michigan team that you would think now with everybody back healthy and so much senior experience that they should be a factor in the Big Ten. Well, Courtney Sims, a 1,000-point club scorer, but don't count out Miami of Ohio. Charlie Coles loves to play half-court offense, and Nathan Peavy is a special talent. The Miami Redhawks are tough to play in Millette Hall. Tell you what, I bet Tommy Amaker is wondering right now, why, why am I going to Oxford? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> But the Mid-American Conference, that's another conference that on a lot of nights you don't want to play those nope. guys. Just ask Jim Christian and Kent State and company. They've yep. been able to get it done a few times in the NCAA tournament. Nine minutes to go in this one. Dayton with the ball, leading Creighton by a pair. Roberts still scoreless in the second half. Tough shot, and it goes down for Plummer. Oh, oh, nice point. look inside. Dayton back up four. This is Dotzler. Funk on the wing. A whistle away from the ball. And throwing an elbow. Shane Watts just picked up his fourth personal foul for the Blue Jays. You know, now with Isaac Miles sitting on the bench, he was the guy who was shadowing Brian Roberts. We'll see if Brian Roberts now can go off as we watch Dane Watts sit down with his fourth personal foul, a guy that banged consecutive threes here in the second half. The good news is Tolliver has not picked up any fouls this half for Creighton, so he's still at two. But Watts is going to be on the bench for a while. 8.20 to go in this one. Dayton with the ball leading by four. Now Josh Dotzler matched up with Brian Roberts. There's a quickness factor there with the injury to Dotzler's right knee. And out front, Little with an unforced turnover. Forty-five, forty-one. Dayton with the lead. Creighton with the basketball. As we come down the stretch, you're going to see Nate Funk and Brian Roberts simply take over this game, either off the dribble, off the shot, or off the pass. 
Tolliver with that jump hook knocks it down. Boy, he showed some strength there. And Kurt Hillsman has been sitting for the Dayton Flyers, and now all of a sudden Anthony Tolliver raises his game over the shorter Norman Plummer. Johnson explodes and gets fouled. Oh, was he quick along that baseline? So we've got a timeout. Free throws coming up for Marcus Johnson and the Dayton Flyers. 7.46 left here in this second half. We may have overtime before it's all said and done. To graduation. Butterfly. Dayton with a 45-43 lead on Creighton. 7.46 left here in the second half as we check out the stat track. Creighton shot 30% in the first half, so you can see what they have done here in the second half to turn things around. They had an incredible 69% shooting in the second half. There's a three-point shooting for the game. And a lot of mistakes in this game. Well, both teams play such quality defense, and both offenses are having a difficult time getting the flow. But Creighton has started to find the answer by getting it to Anthony Tolliver. Since Kurt Hillsman has sat down, Tolliver has blossomed down the low block. Now at nine points on the night and ten rebounds. Here is Marcus Johnson. Some will tell you here in Dayton, as he'll shoot the first of two, that this freshman Marcus Johnson may be the most athletic UD guard since the days of Johnny Davis and I mean he's one of the all time greats uh, and there's a LeBron James factor here I've been able to watch uh, the, the kids up at Akron and Drew Joyce and, and also uh, the, the big kid up there and you know when I look at Marcus Johnson he acts a lot like LeBron James nothing rattles his cage he doesn't talk a lot on the floor he lets his actions do his speaking and when I think about Romeo Travis and Drew Joyce and Marcus Johnson, who all played at Akron St. Vincent St. Mary's, they all learned the LeBron factor. They all play with poise. And in the backcourt, a foul on Marcus Johnson with a tackle. And he has picked up his fourth personal foul. Monty Scott checks in for Marcus Johnson for the Flyers. So Johnson heads to the Dayton bench with 7.43 left. Lonnie Scott back in. Well, you've got to think that Anthony Tolliver is going to be a guy they're going to look to. Dotzler with a travel. Wow. Dayton Ball. And Anthony Tolliver down low with Hillsman on the bench. Tolliver owns the paint. They enter the ball low. He goes one on one with Norman Plummer. About a two inch advantage right there. Anthony Tolliver, too good, too quick, too good of hops. Brian Roberts scoreless in the second half, had 11 in the first. Dayton's got to get Roberts back into the offense with nearly seven minutes to play. Dayton's lead is three. Monty Scott from the corner. We talked about Brian Roberts needs help, and usually he gets it from Monty Scott. Dayton's back up a half dozen under seven to play. Funk, wide open look, and in and out for Dotzler. Tolliver comes down with it. Porter, that was with a miss. Porter on the drive, and he got bumped by Sandoval. 15 foul on Dayton. Second on Sandoval. So Anthony Tolliver has made a difference with Ryan Gregory now trying to find an answer inside. But Tolliver's been a guy now that has 11 rebounds, four of them offensive. He's scoring on the block. And the reason for it, he stayed out of foul trouble here in the second half. On the inbounds, Tolliver gets a nice pump fake, draws the foul. Monty Scott clobbered him. That'll be the first on Scott. And two free throws coming up for Tolliver, who's a 67% free throw shooter. Dayton coach Brian Gregory said today, in his mind, Anthony Tolliver is what college basketball is all about. When he came to Creighton as a freshman, he had trouble catching the ball and just doing the simple skills and now he's made himself into one of the dominant big men in the Missouri Valley Conference and 
Frank Gregory said too many times we, we expect immediate greatness. He said Tolliver is what the game's all about. Well, he's the male scholar athlete of the year for the nation. And this kid is a 3.5 finance major. He's intelligent and he's driven to succeed both on and off the court. I admire him. Six and a half to play. Dayton with the ball and a four point advantage. Funk with the rebound and the Dayton miss. Creighton has numbers. Miles driving and fouled by Roberts. First on Roberts. Both teams in the bonus the rest of the way, but this will be a shooting Ryan foul. Two, Ryan Roberts, his first team seven. 622 remaining. Dayton leading Creighton 49 45. Isaac Miles at the line shooting two for Creighton. So here's the freshman Isaac Miles at the foul line. He is now four of six from the strike this season. True freshman out of Kansas City. And he's getting a lot of quality minutes too with the extended injury situation of Josh Dotzler. Isaac Miles is a, a key cog in the Creighton offense and defense. And there he is matched up again with Brian Roberts. He will not help off of anybody. He will deny Brian Roberts everywhere. Dayton with the ball, leading Creighton 49-46, 6-10 remaining from the UD Arena here in Ohio. Sandoval looks inside for Hillsman, who's back in the game, the freshman. Well, Brian Roberts just simply being shadowed. Someone else has to step up for the Dayton Flyers. Sandoval, bad miss. Tolliver with still another rebound. He has 11 points, 12 rebounds. His second consecutive double-double. Funk. Scott has it. Dayton coming into the attacking end. Spinning as Roberts can't shake free. Scott for three. No. Funk runs it down. Creighton with the ball down three. Dangerous pass. Watts with it. Overlaid it. Scott with a Dayton rebound. 5-13 to play. Three-point Dayton lead. Flyers with the ball. Dayton fans on their feet. There's no lack of effort. Maybe a little lack of execution, but both these teams are giving each other their best knockout punch. It's only December 6th. As Brian Roberts fading away, misses it badly, funk down with it. But these two teams playing it like it's a March game. Porter. Oh, my. He said, I got hacked. Well, you almost have to think back to the last guy who hit the rim. Yeah. <laughs> this hasn't been a, just a dry spell. And Isaac Miles has been given the opportunity by Dana Altman to go one-on-one -on -one with Brian Roberts. And he's got good footwork, good position. And once Roberts gives it up, he simply won't let him have it back. And look at the shot that he forces right there. Falling away from the basket. That is great defense by a freshman, Isaac Miles. Well, you are right. And Mark, the amazing thing about Brian Roberts, the 11 points in the first half, came when he was four for four he's 0 for three in the second half so he's not even getting opportunities as we update our star watch the two prolific scoring guards it's almost a dead heat well, there are two key adjustments to start the second half for Craig one shadow Roberts and Funk go off and then get the ball down to Anthony Tolliver and they have done it well he has ruled the paint by going getting offensive stick backs and dunk it on the rim Anthony Tolliver on the dribble penetration showing to the ball and finishing with authority one on one down low against Jimmy Benny that is a mismatch and that's how Dana Altman has been so successful his second straight double double Anthony Tolliver looks like a senior all conference player. Dayton maintains possession of the ball. 429 left. Dayton leads Creighton by three. Tolliver pleads his final. case to no avail. Dana Altman. Watching his club on the defensive end. It was a 13-point Dayton lead at halftime. Roberts got a lane and overshot it. And guess who? Anthony Tolliver with another carom. Porter had it blocked. Porter tries the pass. Watts had it blocked by Scott. And Creighton screaming about a foul. Altman's out on the court. 
He nearly got teed up. Oh, is Dana Altman living? That's a tie twister right there. Scott. What is that, Rub? Some salt in the wound of Dana Altman. First, Dane Watts goes up for the dunk. It's rejected, and Monty Scott answers with a three bomb from downtown. Well, you know what Dana Altman would like to do with his tie right now. That was on the play in which he thought there was a foul, not a block. And then on the other end, Monty Scott completes. A big possession switch for Dayton. Boy, that's a real momentum changer in this game. 331 left. As Monty Scott now with eight points, trying to pick up the slack as Brian Roberts has been shut down by the Creighton defense. Well, Tom, we talked about in our keys of the game that Brian Roberts needs help. And usually that help comes in the person of Monty Scott. Well, log on to your new online source for all things college sports, ESPNU.com. This online gateway will connect you to all the college sports content from ESPN. Log on to ESPN.U, I should say ESPNU.com today. All right, Creighton with the ball. And that'll be a holding foul out front. Marcus Johnson has just fouled out of the game. The freshman has fouled out with 322 remaining. Creighton's ball when we come back. Dayton leads by six points. Will their lights stay yellow for three seconds? Or six? If the tire shreds, where will it land? Uncertainty on the road can lead to an accident. Now Allstate offers a little extra protection. Accident forgiveness. Starting the day you have it, your rates won't go up just because of an accident. It's time to make the world a better place to drive. Let's all state stand. Are you in good hands? From the fields of glory where Saturday afternoon legends are born to the pageantry and passion, it's time for college football. Now you can bring that passion and drive home with Fathead. So put away that foam finger and slap up a Fathead. With schools from all the big-time college football powerhouses, Fathead wall graphics are classic collectibles made for only real fans. It's easy to put up, just peel in place in any home or office. Fathead can take a hit. Printed on strong, durable vinyl, Fathead is the only wall graphic that actually lets you move it over and over again all season long. Looks like this little fella's ready. So big and real, you can't find them in a store. There's only one place to get them, fathead.com. Officially licensed by the Collegiate Licensing Company, NASCAR, the NBA, the NFL, and Players Inc. Fathead.com is where you can also find all your favorite players and teams. Call or go online at fathead.com today. Check out our special season pricing and be the ultimate fan of your team. Fathead, go big, real big. Love taking pictures? Ever wonder if you could have your pictures published or win prizes? We can help. We're the New York Institute of Photography, America's oldest photography school. Our unique multimedia home study course will teach you the art and business of photography in your spare time. It's easy, fun, and affordable. Whether you just want to take better pictures or want a new career, NYI can make you a better photographer. For a free catalog, call 1-800-652-0101. Twenty-two remaining as Dayton leads Creighton 52 to 46. Both teams in the bonus, both with two timeouts remaining. And don't forget ESPN News coverage of high school basketball. Thursday night, Lance Stores, Jeremy Price, and the Columbia Eagles face James Hickson and the Wheeler Wildcats. The Old Spice High School showcase presented by Nike on ESPN U Thursday at 6:30 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Marcus Johnson has fouled out for the Dayton Flyers. And at the line is Nick Porter, an 85% free throw shooter. His numbers tonight. He earns the bonus. Five point Dayton lead over Creighton.
Big advantage for Creighton at the charity stripe, and they continue to add to it. And look for aggressive full court pressure here from Creighton. They're going to go with their high risk defense. Dayton will want to attack and make them pay. And Sandoval nearly gives it up. And Dayton calls a timeout. They have one remaining. Well, that's a good timeout by Brian Gregory right there. You know, he has a philosophy to attack the press and make them pay and score. And you can see Dayton rock back on their heels from the aggressive pressure right there. He's going to set his offense, get them back in attack mode against the full court pressure. So Dayton maintains possession with a four point lead and 315 remaining. Brian Gregory in your screen there is fourth year. Here's the Dayton head coach. And he played with David Robinson before he transferred to Oakland. As we said, he worked under Judd Heathcote, Tom Izzo, Stan Joplin, Kevin O'Neill. So he learned some from some terrific coaches, and he was ready for this job. I tell you what, when your first job is the University of Dayton, that is some kind of a plum job for your first job in college basketball, and well deserved. And he has gotten this program. Headed in the right direction again with such a young team and so many good young kids still coming in. Now, Brian Gregory, he will even tell you that the reason why he's been successful here at Dayton is because of his mentors. He's listened well, he's learned his lessons well as an assistant, he's prepared well to be a head coach. Shot clock at 10. This is Sandoval. Shot clock at 8. And really, out of rhythm is Dayton offensively right now. Tough wow. shot by Scott. Boy, that's just an athlete rising up and delivering in the clutch. The only senior for the Dayton Flyers, Bonnie Scott, just came up huge. Six-point Dayton lead. Creighton needs a hoop. This is Porter. Inside, scores a big one. And Dana Alden wants that full-court Blue Jay pressure right now. So these two teams trying to deliver the knockout punch. And Dayton all bunched up. Finally, Norman Plummer breaks free. 2.15 to play. Dayton with the ball and a four-point lead. Brian Roberts scoreless in the second half. He's only had four shots in the second half. One as hot as Bonnie Scott has been, you would think that he would be a guy they would be looking for. But Brian Roberts can't give the ball up late in the shot clock. He's got to come get it. Scott has scored Dayton's last eight points. Oh, Isaac Miles just all over Brian Roberts. Great defense. Shot clock at three. And another possession with a rebound to Sandoval. And now Creighton has the clock working against him where they didn't get the rebound. And Dayton will use that clock. Shot clock at 21. Dayton up four. And again, Brian Roberts just struggling to get the basketball. Finally gets a touch about 46 feet from the basket. Miles draped all over him. What a job that freshman's done. Shot clock at five. Scott, why not? Wow! He is unconscious right now. The last 11 Dayton points belong to Monty Scott. Funk trying to counter, and he got bumped before the shot. He'll go to the line to shoot. Flyer fouls on Monty Scott, his second. Team's done. Isaac Miles all over Brian Roberts. Only has one option. Get it to your best athlete. Get it to Monty Scott and light it up. And the Dayton Decibel Dungeon erupts. Substitution. Well, as big as a shot Charles as that Little. was, Mark, you look back to the fact that Dayton got a second chance opportunity when Sandoval got the rebound after the miss. Creighton had played great defense but didn't get rewarded. And Charles Little was the guy that kept that ball alive yep. and tapped it back to Sandoval. Now Funk to shoot the one and one. Oh, he barely got that one in. Nate Funk tonight. With 14 points. The preseason Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year. Creighton down six. Make it five. And now Creighton needs a turnover with a minute to go. Do you start fouling? Sandoval gets out of trouble. I think you play through this possession. Do not foul late in the possession. 
get a quality defensive stop. Well, the good news for Roberts, Miles isn't on him. Not that Funk can't play defense, but now Miles comes out to trap. And Benny in trouble. And Funk with a foul with nine seconds on the shot clock. And that drives Dana Altman absolutely crazy. Shot clock running down, only nine seconds to go. You can get the ball back, get a two or a three. That's an unusual mental mistake by Nate Funk. And now you've got Jimmy Benny, who at the foul line this season is five of six. Shooting the one and one. He's been a kid that, that struggled with his confidence earlier this season from the floor. It's a one and one. That is a huge free throw. Yeah. Oh, and Brian That's Roberts. That's guy you don't foul. You don't foul him, but you can pretty much foul anybody else. This is a three-possession game if he makes it. Nope. It stays a two-possession game. We're at a half minute to go. Creighton needs buckets, and they need him in a hurry. Funk getting bumped. A scramble. It stays in the possession of Creighton, but now only 23 seconds left. But Creighton really hesitated. Didn't know whether to go for the three or get the two. Nate Funk simply used to rise up and make a play. Everybody on their feet at the Udine Arena. Funk for three. It was short. He'll try again. In and out again. And Sandoval fell out of bounds. It'll be Creighton's ball, but now just 9.6 seconds remain. Dayton leads by six, and Funk had two good looks. With both these teams getting after loose balls. Nate Funk will get the ball and shoot it. Dayton can smell it. Brian Gregory called this a monster game for the Dayton Flyers. He feels a win here is a win over a tournament team. Tolliver, he got fouled by Scott and nearly a three-point play except the ball kicked out. 7.8 seconds remaining. Tom, I think you make the first free throw, and then I think you purposely, as you see Anthony Tolliver go up, I think you're in, in late game mode here where you've got to make a special play, make the first free throw, cut it to five, then I think you purposely miss the second one, go for the tip in to cut it to a three-point game. All right, Mark, With let's see. With only 7.8, you've got to roll the dice right now. Five-point Dayton lead. Let's see what Tolliver does. Knocks them down both, and now Creighton calls a timeout. Boy, Mark, how about the play of Monty Scott? He has scored Dayton's last 11 points, and he had two points prior to that. And he's the only senior on this team. And you know, when you're Monty Scott, this is your last chance, and seniors have a tendency to rise up, especially when you play for a guy like Brian Gregory. Brian Gregory doesn't just coach his players. He invests in his players. He invests time, effort. He cares. He loves them. He disciplines them. And right there, you see the culmination of a young man who has grown into a leader for the Dayton Flyers because of the tutelage of Brian Gregory. We greet you tonight from Dayton, Ohio at the UD Arena with Mark Adams. I'm Tom Hamilton. Dayton leads Creighton 58-54. Each team with a timeout remaining. Each team will be in the double bonus the rest of the way. Dayton with a possession arrow favoring it. Four-point game, 7.8 seconds remain. And if you're the Creighton Blue Jays, you do not foul Brian Roberts. You probably should not foul Monty Scott. But Andre Sandoval or Norman Plummer, and there's the home run ball. Plummer, ball game. Brian Gregory made the call during the timeout, looked for the home run, and it was wide open and out of the park for Norman Plummer. And the Dayton Flyers get their biggest win of the season. A 60-54 win over the Creighton Blue Jays. And during the timeout, Brian Gregory knew the defense would be full front denial. Norman Plummer slips for the home run. That is great coaching and better execution by Norman Plummer and the Dayton Flyers. And watch the crowd erupt. The Dayton Flyers go to 7-1. And, and how about their resume? 
wins over Louisville and Creighton, and they've yet to taste A-10 play. Well, and Creighton now will play Xavier at home and then go to Fresno State for the Dayton Flyers. There's a bright horizon for a team that only won 14 games one year ago. They now have seven victories. Our final score, 60-54. to 54. Dayton wins it. College basketball next, Holy Cross against Duke. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. We are College Sports, a presentation of ESPN. For Mark Adams and our entire crew, this is Tom Hamilton. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Dayton with a huge win over Creighton, 60 to 54. So long, everybody, from the UD Arena. The Cameron Crazies, the most vocal part of 246 consecutive.